KBLA Talk 1580, we believe that caring for the community means caring about the climate. You might have heard that we announced a pretty bold 12-month, $2 million campaign to do four things. Increase climate literacy, turn up the volume on communities of color in the climate conversation, connect everyday people with the resources they need to survive and thrive, and highlight frontline climate justice crusaders of color throughout this year. KBLA Talk 1580 will be bringing you insightful interviews on all of our shows to help raise your climate IQ. Each quarter this year, we will also be hosting free climate events in various communities throughout the city with food, fun, and forward-thinking conversations. Thanks to partners like LADWP, Metro, Caltrans, the Sierra Club, the California Community Foundation, the California Endowment, AQMD, MWD, and more. You'll also be hearing more about a couple of national town halls broadcasting live from Los Angeles, to which you will be invited. And we'll be rolling out a robust social media campaign on all our platforms, as well as an outdoor media campaign, all designed to educate, enlighten, and empower you in our fight for climate justice. We want cleaner air. Caring about the community means caring about the climate. At KBLA Talk 1580, we believe that we really can change the world. If we care enough, 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 we care enough. Slam used to sleep on the floor with a kill check. Got a bag I can't bag yet because it's still wet. Reaper man, I pay him a visit, ain't paid his bills yet. Brain hemorrhage, blunt force trauma, I make him feel that. I rap and seal that. Send out the bricks that had the Nike swoop stamps, I'm just doing it for the camp. Showed him to the plug, now he's shopping behind my back. Uh, one thing about that karma, she coming back. If you trapping, keep a strap close. Nowadays, this became a tree and a snake. Your homies out, cause everybody back though, but everybody black though. I let the fiends catch a beam. Used to vomit off the second hand crack smoke. You got that PTSD from testing the key. Guns numb, hope I didn't purchase work from the FEDs. Cause every time I see the judge, it's like a scary movie. The court real n- can't do no jury duty. Internet and alter this do a different game now. I don't rap about dead ops, I let his name now. Shame how they black ball cane, they scratch my name out. I pushed it longer than I expected to get my name hot. They wanna take me out this game like Shikari, black Illuminati, touch big rabbit streets, need a body. I got all of them leeches away from around me. You ain't rich enough to get me hit. Go up the bounty. Uh, spit some cheese. Welcome Chop in, welcome in. Up, you are locked in to RSVP keys. with Jill Monroe Turn here on KBLA Talk 1580. So this is the point in the show where I remind you that later on we have an interview coming up with Makai Pfeiffer regarding his new film Lights Out. So it will be audio only if you haven't already download the app or you can go to the website KBLA 1580 and check it out there. So make sure you do that. Now, you know, Andy is always on theme and that was Freddie Gibbs. I'm not sure the name of the song. I've heard it, but I don't know the name of it. So we'll tell you that. Black Illuminati featuring Jada Kiss. Okay. So shout out to that. Um, Listen, I know you guys are like, who the heck is Freddie Gibbs and why should I care who he is? I mean, he he had a what was what show was Freddie on BMF? He was on BMF last season, season two, you know. So he did that, um, and you know his name is Frederick Tippetton, I believe, and he signed with Interscope years ago, and um, you know, been working putting it out there. Now you might think he's a young guy. But he's not. He's over 40, right? And I only share that with you because obviously when you're talking about something like this, the automatic thought is, oh, that's young, you know, that's young people problems. That's that's kid stuff. They, you know, no adult is doing that. But you think about it over the course of a relationship, right? If you were tight with someone, maybe, you know, you do little things within that that are for each other, I suppose. And you hope that if things end and it's not amicable, that the person will still hold in confidence things you've discussed or perhaps photos. So this is what happened. On Valentine's Day, Freddie has a new girlfriend. So he posted a little video of him and his girlfriend, and it was beautiful. I think it was maybe their official reveal I'm not certain, but it was, you know, 
one of the sweet things that you do and hook up for social media to look really nice on a holiday such as Valentine's Day. Well, apparently his ex-girlfriend wasn't feeling that, right? Her name is Destiny. She is or was, I'm not sure if she still is, a fitness influencer. And so for whatever reason, I guess Freddie blocked her and she decided to post on X, Twitter, blocking me on Twitter while I have a picture of you. This was months ago when she posted this, spreading your, um, what did, what did Sexy Red call it? Your Tootsie Roll, because, you know, FCC is active over here. Um, and my phone is insane. I'm going to spare them that one, though. She wrote this. I guess a couple of, so I thought it was months before this. No, it actually was hours before this. I guess she got heated, you know, at the block and at the new reveal. So she posted a photo of a man appearing to hold his Tootsie Roll cheeks open. And she said, spreading love. Happy Valentine's Day, right? And it's not the first time that she has posted a photo like this on social media following their, you know, less than amicable breakup, right? She's also tweeted some crazy things. She shared a video um, of him before. So Freddie seemed to respond to it, and he seemed unbothered. He said, I guess I better let her you know, and kind of joked it off and kept that thing moving, right? Which you can appreciate, but I want to talk about her for a little bit because I know breakups can be hard. You know, I don't know why they broke up. I don't know if he was stepping out on her, if there were, you know, some other type of unkind treatment. But I just think about anyone that is entrusting someone with photos or allowing them to do things like that. I feel it is a reflection of your character if after you break up because you're angry, you go and spread that stuff into the world. One, there's no purpose behind it. It's not like you're warning. There's nothing but the desire to embarrass someone. Two, it's illegal. Revenge porn is a crime. And, you know, I'm not saying that she needs to be prosecuted or anything like that. I am just saying it is a crime. And the one thing I think that should be agreed upon when you part ways with the relationship, because you made the decision to be involved with the person. And, I mean, I'm assuming he wasn't physically abusive to her or anything like that. Don't know that to be fact, but... If it's just, look, it didn't work out, you know, he stepped out, did some messy stuff, wipe your hands, be thankful you're not dealing with that, and move on. Because if this was a woman, everybody would be up in arms, and they would be trying to cancel her and probably calling for her to be prosecuted. But because he's a man, everyone's just like, ah, he'll be all right. So I just, I wonder why that is. And I feel like that's a dangerous precedence to set because some cow, some way, it's going to double back on us. I just think that it always ends up that way. Listen, when we come forward, we'll have more trending topics and headlines. You're locked in to RSVP with Jill Monroe here on KBLA Talk 1580. Trending topics and the hottest happenings. You're listening to RSVP with Jill Monroe on KBLA Talk 1580. At KBLA Talk 1580, we do black history every single day. In fact, as the only black talk radio station west of the Mississippi, we are black history. Our annual Black History Month luncheon is fast approaching, and we want to be sure to give you ample time to get your company, organization, church, or group to join us at this year's celebration on the last day of the month, Thursday, February 29th at noon. Last year, we honored iconic local black media personalities, including Pat Harvey, Jim Hill, Mark Brown, Beverly White, Sandy Banks, and Pat Prescott, and raised $20,000 in scholarships. This year, we're honoring Black Hollywood creatives who have used their artistic genius as climate justice champions. 
this year's luncheon, we will be showcasing and sharing their inspiring work on our big screen. Plus, a scrumptious meal, live music, great company, and lots of fun with your favorite KBLA Talk 1580 hosts. So contact us today at info at smileyaudiomedia.com or call 323-290-4690. That's info at smileyaudiomedia.com or call 323-290-4690. We hope to see you Thursday, February 29th as we close out Black History Month. At KBLA Talk 1580, we've got your black. Your black. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. talk about. KBLA Talk 1580, connecting you with services and solutions. Stay Housed LA has the resources you need to know your rights and the legal support to back them up. The COVID-19 pandemic has cost people their jobs and livelihoods. This has left an estimated one-third of households not being able to make rent and facing losing their homes. This is a fear no one in our community should have to face. You have rights, though, and Stay Housed LA is here to help. Stay Housed LA is a partnership between the County of Los Angeles, the City of Los Angeles, and local community and legal service providers. Together, they provide tenants with the information and support needed to exercise their rights so they can remain safely in their homes. Find out more about your rights by participating in a virtual tenant workshop. Get the legal assistance you need. Find additional resources in Los Angeles County and the City of Los Angeles. Stay connected to Stay Housed LA County for updates. This and more at stayhousedla.org. Stay connected to Stay Housed LA for updates. This and more at stayhousedla.org. That's stayhousedla.org. Or call their hotline at 213-694-0040. We've got your black with a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. Hey, keeping you informed, entertained, and always ahead of the curve. Ahead of the curve. Hey. This is RSVP with Jill Monroe on KBLA Talk 1580. You are locked in to RSVP with Jill Monroe here on KBLA Talk 1580. I'm going to walk it back for just a second. Before, in hour two, I was asked what Tamika's, Tamika Foster, Raymond, what her second, no, her first husband's last name was. It was, and I kept saying Ryan Kinney, Ryan Kinney. Ryan Kinney was the name of the... I guess dress shirt line that Ryan, her ex-husband, and Kenny Burns, who is a lifestyle specialist, I think he has a show on the radio in Atlanta, used to be a music person, guy, manager. Anyway, they had this line together, so that's why I was saying Ryan Kenny. His last name is actually Glover, so it's Ryan Glover. And Tamika Foster is her maiden name, so... Will she go back to using it? Maybe. Um, As I said, the boys are 16 and 15, so the child support days are winding down, and so is the connection to, you know, needing to have the same last name as your kid. So we'll see what happens. Um, I don't know. I guess I don't really think that's a huge, huge deal, though. It just... I know it's important. I know why it's serious, and but it's a lot to go through changing your name and changing all your legal documents and your driver's license. Like, I don't know. It's been your name for so long. I, again, understand the upsetness for some, but I don't know if it's a huge, huge deal to me. But maybe I'm not thinking about it in the right way. Okay, so we talked about earlier in the week Master P and Snoop Dogg and that they are suing both Walmart and Post Foods, claiming that they were blocking their cereal and using sabotaging efforts. Basically, not putting the cereal up on the shelf. Then when the cereal that was there ran out, there would be more in the back, but not re-upping it, making it look as if you know, demand wasn't high, et cetera, et cetera. Well, in a recent interview, Master P expounded on that a little bit further and talked about the importance of ownership, especially as a black man. It's Black History Month, so it's a message boring, you know, that we should hear again. 
example, uh, with me and Snoop, we're we're business partners. We're creating family brands. So a lot of people look at these names, but Broda's Food, Next, uh, Miller Foods, Distribution. We're creating family brands because we realize it's not enough when you look at African Americans. When you look at uh, business owners, we we can't employ our people that look like us because none of us really own anything. Right. And so you look at uh, CEOs and Fortune 500 companies. We make a tenth of one percent, and we have to change that. So when we march in the middle of the streets, whether it's blacks, whites, Asian, Latinos, we all marching together because we want change. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm telling people out here, do not be afraid because we all want change. Yeah. And we got to fight these corporate giants. Times have changed. A lot of us fighting for what happened in the past. No, I'm fighting for what can we do for a better future. Yeah. So... That's always an important message, and we know that it is true. If we do not build up and create institutions, and by institutions I mean businesses, whatever types, then we can't help to set things up, one, for the generational wealth situation that we always talk about, and we can't bring in and implore and make sure that, you know, we are providing the opportunities that we want to see if it is in the scope of our reach, you know. Obviously, I work for a black-owned business here, and we support that. So we want to see more of that if we can. I know there have been questions. We talked about this initially when we talked about the suit, about the type of food that they are choosing to get into business with. But we know the breakfast food, the different processed food brands are a big business and we are a large part of that consumer base and we're going to get it from somebody. I don't know if that's the right approach. I do think, you know, perhaps maybe down the line there's room for healthier options or what you can to replace it. But listen, black Americans are expected to reach 1.8 trillion in buying power this year. In 2010, our buying power was 971 billion. So that's a lot of zeros behind it. That means that we are spending a lot, a lot of money in the marketplace. And obviously, you know, it would help if we were spreading that around to our fellow, you know, people. And we could um, build equity in those type of era areas. Urban Spencer said, if a white person can come into the mix and change the direction of where your company or brand is heading, then you have no real power. That is an interesting point. But how does one obtain power if not starting somewhere, right? If we don't have it off the gate, how do we go about getting it? Do we go within the system and understand what they're doing, learn it, learn how to take over those pipelines or learn from those pipelines or how to build their own? Is it realistically possible, right, to launch a company without the... I won't even say assistance, but without the business relationships and connections with outside people that are oftentimes are not like us. I mean, realistically, your food brands have to be put into some place. So let's say they did a deal with Kroger, right? Kroger is certainly not black owned. And they, you know, those channels are contingent upon relationships and whatever else happens. But what is the black option that they could go to? Is there a black owned grocery chain? And let's say there is. And let's say it's national. But let's say they only have 50 national stores. How do we get it? How do we support it? Are you going to order cereal online? Maybe. But cereal's a staple. Pancakes are a staple. Do you want to, every time you want them, want to have to go and pay shipping costs or what have you? I mean, if you have Prime, I suppose it's free, maybe, <laughs> still. But realistically, you're going to have to connect outside of even the most connected 
black business owners and individuals are going to have to do business in order to expand with others. So I don't know how we take over ownership of those distribution models and stuff if we don't start off at first in some type of working situation with the bigger ones because there's a monopoly. How You can't push back against that. Urban Spinster says, we would have to work together, and that has not traditionally been our culture, unfortunately. And many black people don't want to listen to others when they start their own. I agree and disagree. I feel like we have worked together in a lot of ways, but there's always a lot of division. And some of it, yeah, is, you know, we talk about the crabs in the barrel thing, but I think at times, too, people discount And not you specifically, Urban Spencer, I'm not talking about you, just in general, what it takes to do business and what it takes to be successful at a business and what it takes to take a business to expand it. And the thing is, we are not at a place as a people or even as a country where we can really, I feel, dial down and do it all on our own. In some small pockets, yes. In some form or fashion, yes. But in order to really tap in and topple these Fortune 500 companies, these, you know, pipelines that have been um, covered by the others for years and years and years and years, I feel like we have to work within the system to chip away with that and establish our own, create those bonds with whatever other level of the distributors are. What type of warehouses do we need? How many? Can we handle the output? So let's say we do start it on our own and we have our own warehouses, but we only have three. How many boxes of cereal and of you know products are those three warehouses able to produce are they able to produce on a nationwide shortage how much of that the transport of that would have to be taken up from the person launching the brand and we haven't even started to talk about marketing yet or building so i i think that realistically especially where we are not just as a black culture, when I'm saying culture in this instance, I'm talking about American culture overall. I don't think there's a way to self-isolate and build. I think that it is unrealistic for the times that we're living in. And is it sustainable? Because to your point, sometimes we don't work together and sometimes we don't always support together. How many black businesses have we seen hang their hat on and, we, you know, a conversation for another day about the degree of business in some of these businesses. But have we seen them fall apart because they can't sustain? It's one thing to say, I'm creating a black business and I'm doing it for my people. But the reality is, just by our numbers, we can only get so far holding us down before we have to look outside and, you know, extend a hand or take the hand that is being extended to us because the numbers do not add up. They just don't. Um, I don't know if they ever will, you know. That is why we go for the strength and numbers approach. That is why we join, not just because we don't want to see unfair treatment of others. That is the obvious. That is a given. But also because it's strength in numbers. And sometimes when it's just us, everybody doesn't necessarily listen. Okay, really quick, I forgot to mention with Freddie Gibbs, he will be participating in the Netflix is a joke festival, which is coming to LA in May. Um, We already mentioned that Cat Williams on May 4th, his Dark Matter tour is a part of that. And a special will be being taped for that. I wonder if it will be a big special like Cat Williams and Friends or if it's just a one-off Cat Williams special only. Curious if we'll get to see in video form any of Torre, um, Hart, or Monique's show. Probably not, I would think, with Monique. She would probably want her own deal separate of that. But... Again, it's a lot happening right now, and um, 
you know, shout out to Master P and Snoop for trying to establish real gener. There's lots of ways to establish generational wealth. The reason why I say real with, you know, trying to build something that can take care of your grandkids, grandkids and stay black. But this is one thing that I do think that we forget when we talk about black business a lot of times. The business side of it, and I'm not talking about from a customer service perspective, I'm talking about just as a business in general. Businesses are created and oftentimes made to be sold. That's how they expand. That's how we get capital to buy other things. You think about this. If Magic Johnson had never sold his interest in the Lakers, he wouldn't have been able to buy into the Dodgers. That's what happened. You know, so it it's a delicate balance because we need generational wealth. We obviously need companies that are here and be, can become, excuse me, legacy brands that continue on and on. But by that same token, in order to grow and get capital and expand out and tap into other things, we have to sell the business. You look at someone like Elon Musk, people forget that he created PayPal. Yes, his family had money, but... He was at the start of PayPal and he sold that. And oh, what did he do with the money that he sold with that? Bought Tesla and Starlink or, you know, bought into it. And now he's one of the richest men in the world because he used the capital of one business. And when he outgrew it or flipped it and he saw the market price for it, he started another. I know there's always that balance of we don't keep companies long enough and that's why we don't have any things. And that is very true. And there is a lot to that. However, <laughs> by the same token, the way business works, businesses are made to be sold. Kendi's back. Shout out to you, Kendi. He says, a lot of talk about black economics is pure fantasy. Kendi, explain. Or call in 800-920-1580, but explain. I'd like to know what you mean by it's pure fantasy. Do you mean it's fantasy in that we cannot get it together as a people to get on the same accord and to move as one? Do you mean that it is fantasy because we will never be completely independent and free of, you know, as Urban Spencer mentioned, a white man coming into the mix and changing the direction of your business. I mean, we've seen examples of that, like, you know, obviously even before Diddy got into his situation or whatever, he was going through battles with De Leon, the parent company, and Ciroc, so forth. So, you know, it's a complicated issue. When we come forward, we'll get into more trending topics and headlines, more on this topic. We're going to talk a little Rick Ross, Pretty V, and Desi Banks, comedian Desi Banks. All of that and more on the other side. You're locked into RSVP with Jill Monroe on KBLA Talk 1580. News and sports is up next. They want to take me out this game like Shikari, Black Illuminati, Afghan, Doggy, straight off the poppy. I ain't trust them, at the dust them like Christopher Maltasani. And it hurt my heart to hurt you, but streets need a body. Yeah, I don't have these get a hobby she ain't working and you ain't got a wife you got a tommy yeah i got all of them leeches away from around me bulletproof to escalate i got iron like robert downey yeah uh. triple s exercise okay kiss <laughs> Confusing a sense of fun and entertainment in every episode. You're listening to RSVP with Jill Monroe on KBLA Talk 1580. More when we come forward. Come forward. I'm Amber Payton. Here's the latest on the Black Information Network. Fulton County DA Fonnie Willis unexpectedly showed up in her own hearing to determine if she should be tossed from former President Trump's Georgia election interference case. Willis, who is black, has been resisting a subpoena to testify, but has changed her mind. A Trump co-defendant says Willis should not serve as prosecutor due to an improper romantic relationship with her special prosecutor, Nathan Wade. South Carolina Representative James Clyburn is stepping down from his position as Assistant Democratic Leader of the House Democratic Caucus. Posting on X, the 83-year-old black congressman said he had informed House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries of his intentions. In the same post, he also announced he's still planning to run for re-election. Clyburn has represented South Carolina's sixth congr... Clyburn has represented South Carolina's sixth congressional district since 1993. That's the latest. I'm Amber Payton on your home for 24-7 News, the Black Information Network.
Joe Buck and John Smoltz welcoming you back to the City Center Convenience Mart. Uh-oh. She's looking at the cigarettes, but she just grabs the gum off the counter. Stand up to cancer and rally want you to reduce your risk for cancer. Go to takeahealthystand.com. Climbing is king. Climbing is king. At KBLA Talk 1580, we believe that caring for the community means caring about the climate. You might have heard that we announced a pretty bold 12-month, $2 million campaign to do four things. Increase climate literacy, turn up the volume on communities of color in the climate conversation, connect everyday people with the resources they need to survive and thrive, and highlight frontline climate justice crusaders of color throughout this year. KBLA Talk 1580 will be bringing you insightful interviews on all of our shows to help raise your climate IQ. Each quarter this year, we will also be hosting free climate events in various communities throughout the city with food, fun, and forward-thinking conversations. Thanks to partners like LADWP, Metro, Caltrans, the Sierra Club, the California Community Foundation, the California Endowment, AQMD, MWD, and more. You'll also be hearing more about a couple of national town halls broadcasting live from Los Angeles, to which you will be invited. And we'll be rolling out a robust social media campaign on all our platforms, as well as an outdoor media campaign, all designed to educate, enlighten, and empower you in our fight for climate justice. We want cleaner air. Caring about the community means caring about the climate. At KBLA Talk 1580, we believe that we really can change the world. If we care enough, 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 if we care enough. Helping to broaden your political and moral imagination with our 2024 climate justice campaign. We're KBLA Talk 1580. KBLA Talk 1580. We've got a lot to talk about. KBLA Talk 1580 believes in community empowerment. LA's 99 neighborhood councils form the grassroots level of the Los Angeles city government. The system was created to connect LA's diverse communities to City Hall. While neighborhood council board members are volunteers, they are also public officials elected to office by the members of their community. Neighborhood councils advocate on issues like homelessness, housing, land use, emergency preparedness, public safety, parks, transportation, and sustainability. They also provide local expertise on the delivery of city services to their various communities. Neighborhood councils are open to participation by anyone who is a part of the fabric of daily life in said community. This includes those who live, work, or own property, or a business. If you are interested in stepping up to join your local neighborhood council, visit www.empowerla.org. That's empowerla.org. It's time to think globally, but act locally. This is a community call to action from KBLA Talk 1580. If you're looking for the most epic place on earth, Let's start at the base of a massive waterfall. Then trek through the thick jungle. Then climb to the peak of a snowy mountaintop. Then once you get there, keep going. Because with intelligent 4x4 and 7 drive modes and a Nissan Pathfinder, the search is the real adventure. Available feature. Intelligent 4x4 cannot prevent collisions or provide enhanced traction in all conditions. Always monitor traffic and weather conditions. Watch out! The galaxy is safe once again. In the pretend universe, kids play with pretend guns. In the real world, it's up to us to make sure they don't get their hands on a real gun. If you have a gun in the house, keep it locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition. Safe gun storage saves lives. Learn how to make your home safer at nfamilyfire.org. That's nfamilyfire.org. Brought to you by N Family Fire, Brady, and the Ad Council. Tips to help improve your credit score in 2024. Establishing credit is an important key to achieving financial health, but building a credit history from scratch can feel challenging since you need credit to build credit. First, what does it mean to build credit? All consumers have a score between 300 and 850. You want your score to be as high as possible as lenders look at your credit score to make loan and credit decisions. A good credit score shows you have a track record of borrowing money responsibly. Remember, it's never too late to build or rebuild your credit. This segment is sponsored by J.P. Morgan Chase & Company. Curating the most compelling stories and delivering them straight to your ears. You're listening to RSVP with Jill Monroe on KBLA Talk 1580. Hey, 
still yeah. broke, boy, still can't believe I used to mess with oh, you. I've been playing bees because I ain't playing to be stuck yeah. with you, man. I see you still kick it with them op chickens. I'm the only reason that your goofy self got women. All them girls want to look like me. She most likely only mess with you just to spite me. But please don't get it twisted. I ain't tripping. I never put my faith in it. Boy, I'm a die independent. If you was wondering, yeah, boy, I'm still that chick. I had to block you, but you still got to watch this. Because who you know rock it like me? No bra, tight tee, slick back ponytail, feeling like I'm iced tea. You know I love you good. Real hood when you wake up. You know that girl weak if she ain't messing up her makeup. Man, I can't believe I used to let you touch me. I'd rather be in jail before a broke boy. Ladies, love yourself because it could get ugly. That's why I get money. And I don't give a fuck if that leave tonight because that don't run me. You better get on your knees and eat this right before I have another do it for me. Because don't run me. I run. Welcome back in to RSVP with Jill Monroe here on KBLA Talk 1580. Andy, I'm going to ask you a question because we talked about this with Megan the Stallion, right? I'm assuming that's a remix. That's not right. That's the original beat for that. Okay, but think about this. What did I talk about when they, the tracks that they use, when they use drum heavy tracks? I feel like it doesn't knock with her voice because her voice is so staccato. You know, she is the beat. She is the percussion when she spits. And with something like that where the drums are softer, you know, really the bass line that you hop on, it's the bass line, I'm sorry, that like kind of carries the beat in that. There's percussion in it, but it's a little different. I feel like her flows go differently and that it... it um it rests within the beat instead of it battling with the beat. So, you know, that's just my, was that from the fever? Was that a, a, a trauma zine? Okay. Okay. So. A couple years ago. A couple years ago. Okay. I remember that. I don't know. That's just my thoughts on Megan Thee Stallion. Random. I know. Listen, let me remind you now. We have an interview coming up with Makai Pfeiffer for his new film, Lights Out, that will be audio only. So make sure that you have either downloaded the app or are ready to check it out online. Okay, so two things that we're going to get into before that. The first is, forgot to mention that Kanye West's Vultures 1 album has been snatched off Apple Music. So apparently... Fuga, F-U-G-A, I'm not sure if I'm mispronouncing that, is the digital distribution company that Kanye signed with to distribute his music, right? So last year they told him that they weren't going to release Vultures 1 because of the samples not clearing. We know that both Ozzy Osbourne and Donna Summer, well, Donna Summer's estate, came out and said that they did not clear the request. So with the Donna Summer song, I believe it's an interlope. Um, with Ozzy, he wanted to use the War Pig sample, and we talked about that last night. But basically, because those samples weren't cleared, and as his distribution arm, they are liable and culpable for that, right? So when Kanye, I guess, basically uploaded it as on his own, they were like, uh-uh, we're not taking the fall for that. No problems for that. So they started deleting and removing, right? So anyway, it leaves them exposed for a potential lawsuit, obviously, because it's not just the samples were uncleared. They were flat out denied. You know, he requested and they said no, and he put it out anyway. So we'll see what happens with that, you know. Kanye is always into something. There are some people that felt like it was a C-O-N spiracy because he was going to be number one and blah, 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 blah. No, it's just Kanye doing a little bit of shoddy business, which, you know, from time to time he has been known to do. So, listen, <laughs> good luck, yay. <laughs> He'll figure it out. So, we were talking about or we've been talking about relationships and exposing and things of that nature. So the most recent interview on Club Shay Shay involved internet comedian Desi Banks. And so Shannon asked him, because Desi used to do a lot of skits with Pretty V, 
who is Rick Ross's ex-girlfriend. I know it's hard to keep up. You might need a flow chart, but I got you. Um, so Desi explained that V wasn't tripping. She had moved along. But you know, Rick Ross's new girlfriend, a little young, a little green, and like I mentioned about Shannon, probably needs to, you know, maybe, maybe develop tougher skin if she's going to be with a public figure and, you know, <laughs> figure out how to just ignore things. So this is what Desi had to say about Pretty V and Rick Ross's breakup. Rick Ross and Pretty V. Pretty V did a hilarious video where she revealed Rick Ross had a new boo. Did you call and like, hey, it's going to be okay? Man. She, like, V, if y'all know V. No, v, I don't know V. Oh, well, V don't give a, she don't give a shit. <laughs> she that, that, she, don't, she don't, don't care about that. She, that's why I said, man, that social media stuff's so crazy. And I ain't going to put the business out there, but it's so crazy. Right. It's crazy, man. You know? It ain't like, even like that, like, even that girl, I, ain't, I don't know that girl from Can of Paint, but just how they do now. Like, they put out, they, they explain, they say, oh, me and such, we doing this, we doing that, or whatever it is. Man, real boss woman or whatever it is, man, don't fuck anything. If they know they got a man, they ain't got to do none of that to explain it. Right. I got him, I'm at the crib. Oh, without him. explanation, I'm here. though. I'm here. I'm at the house. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, that's the difference between a social media girl and, and, a, and a girl that, that, that a real, real you know what I'm saying? That, like that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hate the gossip of women on live social media. I hate that. So, listen, um, you know, he's not wrong, Right. Because Christina kind of hops in the conversations and sets herself up. And again, she's young and maybe this attention, maybe this is the most high profile relationship she has. And, you know, that's one of the benefits. Keep all eyes on her, whatever. So she got into the comments about this and said, hey there, fellow strangers, just as you might have responded to a random question from an interviewer, I did too. I didn't choose the questions, but I'm not afraid to share my thoughts. Let's focus on our own relationships and not worry about others. Here's the thing. Much like you said you were responding to a question, he obviously was too. And that was totally unnecessary for her to wander in the comments and do that. Just enjoy your relationship. You will feel much better. I understand sometimes we feel attacked and we want to defend ourselves, but at this point, right, you and Ross are solid. Keep it that way. Take us out of the group chat. Or don't, you know, willingly throw yourself in the middle of it. Because what we have known to be true is that it always seems to turn out bad. Listen, VIPs, I appreciate you guys locking in, you know, here every night, Monday through Friday, 9 p.m. to midnight on RSVP with Jill Monroe. Now, coming up, we have an interview with Makai Pfeiffer. As I mentioned earlier, you know Makai from Soul Food, ER, a bunch of other things, New Jersey Drive. I think that was his first film. So we talked to him about his new film, Lights Out. He plays a character named Max, who is at a crossroads with his life, trying to change his life, and comes across a guy who he feels can be of use to him. Max is an ex-con, and the guy he comes across is a very talented street fighter and they get caught up in the world of underground fight clubs so we're going to talk a little bit with him about that and kind of where his head is at for this role it was an interesting conversation so in order to do that though if you're watching us on youtube make sure that you have either downloaded the app or headed over to the website so you can take in all of that so, you know, today is my Friday, although there will be a show tomorrow. So I appreciate you guys with rocking with us. We will be back here on Monday live for more trending topics and headlines on RSVP with Jill Monroe. I hope that you have an amazing weekend. Of course, we're going to talk a little bit about the All-Star Game next week and tons, tons of more trending topics and headlines. I appreciate you. Have an amazing night. Check out the Makai Pfeiffer interview. It's fire. RSVP with Jill Monroe is your go-to show for staying in the know. More engaging conversation when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580. Some people just know the best places to eat around town. Those are the people who know to choose Allstate. They know exactly where to go to get exactly what you're wanting. 
They know where to find the spiciest hot pot, the gooeyest brownies, and the tenderest, most flavorful portobello steak. Those people also know that safe drivers save 40% with Allstate. Saving 40% is based on the national average premium savings for Allstate Auto customers with a clean driving record versus those without. Savings vary by state and vary based on how you buy. Subject to terms, conditions, and availability. Allstate Fair and Casualty Insurance Company and affiliates, Northbrook, Illinois. The possibility of lung cancer can be pretty scary, especially if you're one of approximately 8 million current or former smokers at high risk. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know that now there's a breakthrough low-dose 